Thanks for joining us here on 9 News Plus. I'm Chris Bianchi. Now, wireless emergency alerts, a big topic of discussion, and Steve Stager from 9 News here has been doing a lot of reporting on that. Um, Steve, your story on Monday, February the 6th, talked in detail about how a small grass fire near Colorado Springs triggered wireless emergency alerts in places like Conifer, south of Pueblo, um, Castle Rock, and it's obviously a big point of concern. What did your investigation find, Steve? So it... it unveiled this flaw that's inside the system that we report on just about every single time. And before we talk about wireless emergency alerts, you should know what they are. Mm -hmm. So you you might be able to get an emergency alert from your phone from you know your local county or wherever you are if you've opted into their system. It's a completely separate system. What we are talking about are those amber alerts that you get on your phone uh, that blast you, make the loud noise. We can't make it on broadcast TV because it's actually a violation of the FCC. They, they get angry when you hear that noise. But you'll know what I'm talking about when I say that loud noise that's like the emergency alert system going off on your phone. The nice thing about these alerts is that if the system works the way it should, emergency managers should be able to draw on a map and say, I want to alert all these people right here and it'll go to whatever cell phones it finds inside that area. The problem is, is we've been working on for about a year now and trying to figure out why folks are so hesitant to use this system. Hmm. Um, it is because it's really outdated. Um, the infrastructure is pretty outdated. It was originally meant to send wide scale alerts to like hurricane evacuation areas, which it makes sense. I mean, you, you've got multiple days to let people know what's going on. Now we're trying to use it in this application where we're alerting people about like an instant emergency in their area, whether it be a wildfire, a flash flood, maybe an active shooter. And we're trying to target specific communities. And what we're finding out is that the infrastructure for the cell towers is so kind of dated and archaic that these messages are going a lot further than they should. And for years, like, we've done stories after these alerts, and we've asked emergency managers and pressed them, why did this go further than it should have? But now we're finally kind of getting an explanation of why. Because often at the time, they'll just say, like, we sent it to what we thought was the area where it was supposed to go. I have no idea why this person in Conifer got a message from when it was meant for someone in El Paso County. And so this story on February 6th focuses on a community in Colorado Springs. Uh, there was a fire there last year. Um, in an open space behind a, a bunch of homes. And they were concerned because the winds were blowing. They wanted to get people out of there. So as they would in any sort of situation, an emergency manager went on a map, starts drawing lines, and tries to be a little intricate. You look at the shape, and it's, it's, a little, it's got a lot of different lines on it. But it's a six-block area where they're trying to evacuate this neighborhood. And next thing they know, after they send the alert, all these phone calls start coming into the 911 center from people all over the county saying, like, oh, am I supposed to evacuate? Now, the message said Summer Grace and Ackerman was the area that they were trying to evacuate. Mm. There's two streets in a residential neighborhood. Problem is, a lot of people don't read the full message, or, or maybe they don't get the full message. They don't see the full message. Uh, they just see evacuation. Right. And then go, uh-oh. So then at the time, and it was very strange because Colorado Springs at the time said, we're not going to use these again until we figure out what went wrong. Mm. Uh, and they did this long investigation, and they found that what happened was when they drew that intricate shape, that it had more than 100 lines on it. So imagine you're drawing something in Microsoft Paint, and you put a dot on a map, and then a dot here, and it connects it with a line, and a dot here, and it connects it with a line. That shape had so many little intricacies in it and little dots in it and points and vertices is what they call it in, in, in the actual industry that it made the system overwhelmed because it can only handle up to a hundred lines it was trying to read this really complex shape and instead of just alerting that area the system then alerted the entire county and so when you alert the entire county, the way this system works, sorry, I can go on. Yeah, 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 no, no, continue. The way this system works is it's a broadcast of a message. So any cell tower that thinks that they would have people in the area that is supposed to be alerted broadcasts the signal. And then it depends on your phone to receive that message and then geolocate it and figure out if you're in the right space where you're supposed to be. It should be accurate up to a tenth of a mile of where the line is drawn. Problem is, 
that's new technology. And old phones have the ability to receive this, but they're way far away from from where the the actual point may be. And so you so we heard from people in, or, or I should say, El Paso County heard from people after that alert that they said for that small neighborhood. They heard from someone in Conifer, 55 miles north, and they heard from someone south of Pueblo. And the uh, the folks at the emergency management center said, think about it. We're sitting in El Paso County about mile marker 140 on I-25. And Pueblo is about mile marker 100. That's 40 miles away. Oh my goodness. And so these messages go too far, which then overwhelm um, 911 centers and the peace. There's some calls from 911 calls from Douglas County of people in Castle Rock um, or Castle Pines who got this message and tried to figure out where they needed to go. Um, so there's a big concern there. A, when you're trying to evacuate a small area and you accidentally alert thousands of people, you're going to have people on the roads and it may clog up the actual evacuation routes that you're trying to get. But you also have the problem of it reaching, like reaching tons of people who are confused and then calling 911 to see if they need to evacuate at a time when you're trying to work an actual working wildfire in your 911 center and talk to people who are actually impacted by it. So there are a lot of problems with that system. The question is, what can you do to make it better? And we'll get to that here in just a second, but just kind of recap the top line takeaways is that it's an outdated system, the wireless emergency alert system, but its intent or the way it's supposed to work is that within a tenth of a mile you can draw a line, an emergency manager can draw a line, and that within that zone and then an urgent message is promptly received by people on their phones. Anyone, and anywhere. And this is opposed to the other system, which is you know an opt-in alerting system where you may have done this at your house where you get something from the county that says opt-in to our emergency mm -hmm. alerts, where you enter an address and you enter your cell phone mm -hmm. number and it's specifically tied to that address. Um, this is a system that will alert anyone in a specific area at the current time. So you think about like, how many, especially in our state, how many people travel through here um, and may find themselves in an area where they're in a dangerous spot they will get that alert because they have their phone inside the, the area. The problem is there's some hesitancy to use this system knowing that it might blast out pretty far. And obviously the story that you're reporting on with that fire may not help that with obviously a very, very high false alarm rate with what just happened. Yeah, it, you know, it's interesting. So Colorado Springs said after this that they wouldn't use it until they figured out what went wrong. They are using it again. Okay. The emergency manager down in Colorado Springs or the... the, the I'm sorry, your story was in May, right? Oh, the original story. Oh, I'm sorry, the original story. Uh -huh. uh, the original story about we had was about the Marshall Fire. Boulder County opted not to use that alert. Part of the problem was they hadn't set up the WIA system at that time. Um, but it got us kind of wondering about the WIA system and looking around. And, and like through our reporting, we realized that there were still communities that weren't using this system in Colorado. Mm -hmm. We asked why. Well, our current system works very well. And we started to hear some of these rumblings about you know, we worry about over alerting people. Um, and so we were like, what's wrong with the system? And so then we started inching into it and kind of getting a little bit more of an idea of what's wrong with it. So the Marshall Fire kind of prompted a lot of these questions, right? Marshall pro Fire prompted that for all of us, uh, for this entire story, because we were just curious how the system works. And we started finding flaws in it. Then we started to realize, like, hey, like, there's another story here mm. about why. Why is this system, in an era when we can track a pizza on our phone, um, is this system not up to the standard that, that people kind of expect from it? So maybe to start looking forward, based on what your understanding is, and granted it seems like there's a lot of technological issues, what are those steps being taken to rectify this? So uh, the FCC is currently holding um, an open comment period where emergency managers can kind of talk about the issues that they're having with the system. Cell phone companies can kind of weigh in about trouble they may have. Um, there's a lot kind of going on regulatory-wise. The question hmm. is, will it actually make change? Because they've had these open comment periods before. Um, not much has changed since then. I will say, the one thing we are noticing is that you're, you're finding more and more phones that are, are actually able to handle these messages that are, with that geographic specificity, the, the WIA 3.0 is what they call it. Um, but I know a lot of emergency managers who want to see a federal government standard on, hmm. uh, on how this system should operate, a federal government standard for how cell phone companies should be like producing cell phones 
they should all have this technology in it. Right now, it's absolutely voluntary that cell phone companies take part in hmm. this system, which was an interesting thing that we discovered as we were working through this. Most, most of them do. Um, and you'll hear from experts in the piece who talk about, like, they do come to the table and send these messages when they have to. There's just not a whole lot of investment in making this system better. Mm. Part of the reason one of the experts in our piece is an emergency manager in Sonoma County, California, says is there's really no money in it um, for a cell phone company, right? You know, like, you can't charge $5 more to get the, like, updated alert system on your phone. And so maybe that's not driving as much innovation as there should be in that space, where the innovation is, uh, you know, for, like, Uber Eats or something like that, where you can watch your delivery driver, like, in real time pulling up to your house. So that creates an expectation, which then doesn't follow through. Based on what you're saying, correct me if I'm wrong, would it be, if there was enough money in there, is it a relatively easy fix based on what you understand about it? So I don't pretend to be an engineer um, at all, but you know, you got to think that cell phone companies have been able to innovate a lot of things. Right. Um, and you mentioned the pizza analogy yeah. and Uber. I mean, yeah. it should be? Uh, I don't know. You'd hope so. You'd hope um, so. You know, and, and what the emergency manager we talked to from Sonoma County was talking about is this idea of establishing just a standard of what things, sh like how things should work. What emergency managers should expect when they hit the button. Mm. There is no standard in that right now. He talks about back in, you know, the, the days of landline telephones and copper wire telephone lines running to houses. Like the federal government established standards in those cases of how they were to work in emergency. They created you know, backup power sources so that should there be a nuclear attack in the, you know, 50s and 60s that there would be backup power to run these cell phone or run, run these landline telephones. And he's quite, kind of questioning why in an era of disaster are we not investing that kind of standard into these companies to kind of require certain things from them. Maybe asking you something that may go beyond the scope of your reporting here, so feel free uh, to obviously say you don't know here, but um, what about the state of Colorado, especially specifically with the increase of urban interface wildfires, and that's predicted to continue to increase over the next few years. Is there an added urgency from the state to get this Yeah, the state actually, well, in, you know, when, in our previous reporting, we found that there were several communities, several counties in Colorado that didn't have wireless emergency alert systems kind of integrated into mm. their platforms of alerting people. Uh, the, state, the state has set an, a deadline by the end of this year to make sure that all communities are online with this system. And you're seeing Colorado communities kind of give this feedback to the FCC and hope that like the system will, will improve. You've got a lot of mountain communities here, right, where cell towers are kind of spread out. You've got a lot of rural plains where cell phone towers are also spread out. Um, I think I'm hearing from a lot of Colorado emergency managers about this because they want to know this system works the best that it possibly can. So with that said, um there are resources, right, to make sure that yeah. your phone can get this, right? So we're going to talk in, in the piece on February 6th. We talked quite a bit about older technology inside cell phones. So there are three versions of this software that have been released on phones. 1.0 is the kind of bare bones technology. It sends a 90 character message maximum to a phone. Um, and they blast out for miles and miles and miles. Um, there are a lot of phones that still use that. Hmm. And we have... We're actually, as part of this story, including a link to another article on 9news.com where you can actually go to your provider's website, look up the model of your phone, and try to determine which uh, version of software you have. We had 2.0 upgraded that quite a bit, went up to 360 characters. It still has limitations with geographic stuff. Okay. I have, we had 2.0 on my phone for a long time and would get messages that were meant for very, very far away from where I was. Uh, not very far away, but you know what I mean. Far, further than you want. Yeah, miles away from where miles. I was. Uh, and then there's 3.0, which is the most up-to-date software, which is supposed to use the geolocation in your phone to try to sort out where you are in relation to the emergency area, and it will actually, hopefully, alert you, if you even if you're about a tenth of a mile beyond, so 520 feet uh, beyond the boundary lines. It's the best software. I just upgraded my phone and I just got <laughs> WIA 3.0 on it. I think this is just an important thing for people to realize because I get a lot of, after reporting on this quite a bit, I'll hear from people who say, ah, you know, my husband didn't get a message. 
And I did. And we were both sitting right next to each other. Hmm. Now, knowing this, the first question I'll ask them is, how old's your, your phone? How old's your husband's phone? And usually it's, my husband has the newest, latest, and greatest technology, but my phone is, you know, three, four years old. Well, that's the reason why. Hmm. It's because the technology in your phone is too old. So one of the things that the um, emergency managers in Colorado actually wrote yeah. in and asked with the FCC is to try to figure out some way that cell phone companies could either upgrade people's phones or start to phase out 1.0 phones and so that people would have to obviously go and buy a new cell phone, but it would have the better technology on it. Yeah, and uh, again, improve public safety, you would think, with those up that updated technology. Um, is there anything else we should know about, about this and what people should know? You know, if you get a message and you're far away from something, I would love to hear from you. If you have questions about this system, I would love to hear from you. It is a little weird. We've heard strange cases of like people in between boundary lines where somebody will send a WIA and it'll you know shut off their phone um, or it'll huh. like Gosh. just blast them all day long. Um, if those things happen to you, we'd love to hear from you so that we could try to continue this reporting out. But I think it'll be interesting to see in this new phase of commenting and with this new era of disaster that we've kind of seen in this country with more and more fires here in Colorado and, and, and elsewhere um, and, and just more disaster from place to place if the federal government will take the steps to try to make this system a little bit safer. Yeah, sounds like that to me. And I guess my, my, my final thought and takeaway from this is there's maybe a little bit of the kind of wild west of technology still with this. Is that correct? Yeah. I mean, this is a new technology. And one of the first things that you'll hear from, from folks, it's not that new, though, by the way. It's been mm -hmm. around since, like, Hurricane Katrina. So 2005, um, yeah. Yeah. It, it's been in existence for a long time. You'll hear from everyone that it's a mix of imperfect technologies, and the question is now. Now that we're in 2023, can someone innovate, even though it may not have that dollar sign attached to it, and try to make the system better just for people's public safety? Well, Steve, thanks for your reporting. Thanks for enlightening us on this. Again, make sure you can go to 9news.com and make sure if your phone has that updated software, and there's more resources at 9news.com as well. But, Steve, thanks for joining us here on 9news+. Plus. This is fun. I like your little box.